we are hoping that it is not longer than like 45 minutes. No shocker here. And there's queso in here. Exactly what happens at night with Rise of the Resistance. Good morning and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Brianna, this is Corey, and we are on day one of our first park day on our Disney Christmas vacation, which we are so, so excited about. Today we're going to Hollywood Studios. Yes, so we are about to jump on the Skyliner. It's about 7.50 in the morning, so I used Genie Plus this morning and booked Corey and I a 9.25 a.m. rock and roller coaster, and we're gonna try to rope drop Slinky Dog Dash, so we're gonna be wide awake with no coffee. So we will check in with you when we get to Hollywood Studios to share our day with you. Make sure if you have not already that you subscribe down below, give this video a big thumbs up, and comment below your favorite part of Hollywood studios so now I'm gonna show you my outfit of the day and then we're gonna head out to studios so quick outfit of the day for Hollywood Studios my ears are from shop Disney my wreath t-shirt is from Amazon my pants are from Old Navy but I am bringing biker shorts in case it gets a little bit warm my sneakers are from Adidas I think they're called the free run or something they're super comfortable I wore them to the Christmas party last night and loved them I made it to Hollywood Studios yeah, yeah. in we left our room at 7 50 it is 804 and we literally just made it to Hollywood Studios so Cruising. I'm pretty sure that we have to wait until 830 to get into the park because that's when like early park hours start we are oh there, oh, there it is so they're testing it no so people. it is what time is it again 820 all right so it is 820 we were let into the park right at 8 a.m. but they didn't have any of the rides operating until 8.30. So we are in line for Slinky Dog Dash. We are all the way back by Joffrey's Coffee Place. So we're like, we're pretty steep. And yeah, I mean, it's pretty far. That is Slinky Dog Dash. We have to go around this corner and through the queue. But this whole entire line is for Slinky Dog Dash. We are hoping that it is not longer than like 45 minutes to an hour. I'm fine to wait that long. When we finish Slinky Dog Dash, we'll let you know how long it is. So it's 8.31, quick check-in. We are cruising in the line, so let's actually see how long it takes to get on Slinky Dog because we have walked probably like almost half the queue on the outside already. Literally, the minute that they officially opened, opened the park, literally once they at 8:30, like, welcome to Hollywood Studios. And the line was cruising, so, so we are hoping that this will be like maybe a 20-minute wait. I am hoping to get on Toy Story Mania right after and that way we can stay within Toy Story Land. We are gonna eat lunch at Woody's Lunchbox today, which I'm excited about because okay. we wanted to eat there last time. But if you have not watched my Florida vlogs, make sure to do so. I will queue them up up here so that you can watch the whole thing. Let's actually see how long it takes to get on Slinky Dog. Slinky Dog was 30 minutes. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Not even. We were off right at 9 a.m. So it's 9 a.m. We just got off and now we are gonna head into Toy Story Mania. Corey beat me last time we were here. Honestly, it was But not close. by a lot. This ain't, it was this ain't really no Buzz Lightyear close. stuff. I'm no Buzz actually Lightyear. sweating I'm a really, bit. I'm really good at this game. And it's one of my favorite rides. My fingers are crossed that I can beat Corey today. So let's see, but now we're gonna get on Toy Story Mania and then we're gonna head over and scan in for our lightning lane at Rock and Roller Coaster. We rode Toy Story Mania. No shocker here, Corey won again. But you actually didn't win by as much as I thought. Honestly, by a, I improved from last time. It is about 9.25. We are in a little bit of a sprint walk to Rock and Roller Coaster because I have a lightning lane for 9.25. So our goal is to immediately scan our band and then try to book something else. So I will keep you posted the minute we scan. I'll take you along and see what lightning lanes we can book right away. So we had a very drastically different morning. Last time I checked in with everyone, it was 9.25 and it is what time? 10.53. 10.53. So we went from Toy Story Mania all the way over to Rock and Roller Coaster and it was down so they gave us like an experiential pass instead of a individual lightning lane for Rock and Roller Coaster. So we ended up quickly running and doing the standby line for Tower of Terror which was about 25 minutes. That ride And it makes, said it was supposed to be 50. Yeah, it said it was 50 but it was 25. When I ride Tower of Terror, I am truly terrified. Like the dropping sensation makes me terrified. And Corey 
Corey just laughs at me the She's whole time. She's yelling at me mid-ride, why are you laughing? I'm yeah. like, at you. But it's fun, but it's fun. <laughs> so we finished Tower of Terror, and then we quickly took our lightning lane back, went over to Rock and Roller Coaster, and scanned our bands, because we actually could still use that same lightning lane, so we used it for Rock and Roller Coaster. Now we're gonna get some popcorn, and then we're gonna head over to Baseline Tap Room and get a charcuterie board. So we just got to Baseline Tap House. I got a Diet Coke with lemon, because I'm not a beer drinker, and I learned that the last time that I was here, because I did not enjoy it. And then I'll show you what Corey got for a beer. I got the Golden Oak Hoffenweizen. And then we are also trying the Baseline Tap House Charcuterie, which just looks delicious to pick on. We actually just finished up at Baseline Tap House. Corey finished his beer. We had that delicious charcuterie board. 10 out of 10 recommend. If you have not come to Baseline Tap House in Hollywood Studios and gotten the $10 charcuterie board. It is worth every single penny because it was delicious. There was also a lovely girl that came up and even said that she recognized me from YouTube, which just really made my heart super happy. If you ever recognize me in the parks, if Corey and I are ever here, always come up and say hello because your support means everything. So that was just really sweet and definitely 100% made my day. We will take you on over to Woody's Lunchbox and show you what we get for lunch. Corey got the brisket grilled cheese with tater tots. I got the loaded tater tots. I just didn't do chili because I don't like beans. And then we also got the holiday lunchbox tart, which is supposed to be really good. So we are going to dive into Woody's lunchbox and we'll let you know how it is. Corey took a bite because he couldn't wait and I told him not to. So how is it so far? I got loaded tots, but I actually did not do the chili because I don't like beans. So it is just cheese, corn chips, sour cream, green onion, and tater tots. Is that good? And there's queso in here. That queso is delicious. Corey's trying. And? Oh, uh, the corn chip does make it. They rock, rock, yeah. Lunchbox tart. It's okay. It has a little bit of a holiday taste, but honestly, the inside's pretty hollow, so there's like not a lot in the inside. Boy's lunchbox is absolutely delish. We finished up at Woody's lunchbox and it was delicious. The tots were great. The Pop-Tart was, in my opinion, subpar. I'd probably never ever get it again because I actually didn't really love it that much. Corey also loved his brisket grilled cheese. So overall, Woody's Lunchbox, nine out of 10. I just wanted to pop on and say that Corey and I have just absolutely killed the park today. If you're gonna do Genie Plus, I would recommend Hollywood Studios, but you do have to be consistently checking your phone. The plus of having Genie Plus is that you can schedule out your day for like the next hour so you have time in between to be able to do a few things. So so I would say that's definitely the pro to Jeannie. Corey and I are now ready to head on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which we are so excited about. We have a lightning lane for it, so we're just gonna scan in, ride the ride, and then we are taking the Skyliner over to the Riviera for a dinner reservation, which I am probably the most excited about about our trip to Topolino's Terrace. We are about to scan in for our lightning lane, and the standby looks to be 65 minutes. And honestly, it looks much longer than that. So we are gonna see, Corey, check the time. It is 4.27. We are gonna scan our lightning lane, and let's see how long it takes for us to get on Minnie and Mickey's. So it was just like 30 seconds through the door, but it looks like there's almost like a little bit of a snake wraparound. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is an individual lightning lane. So Corey and I had to pay individually to pre-book a Minnie and Mickey's time. So there is still like a snake of a queue, but it looks like it's probably gonna go by pretty quickly. So we'll let you know exactly when we get right on the ride. Five minutes and we made it into the pre-show. We're sitting on the ride, less than 10. So let's ride Minnie and Mickey's Runaway Railway. If he held the camera or No, was she to wanted talk. me to explain everything and I'm just like, we're gonna be here well, for three hours. Well, I said, hours. you can update the vlog and Corey said, no, he really didn't want to. So I'm doing it, I just really wanted him to hold the camera. So we just finished Minnie and Mickey's Runaway Railway. Less than 10 minutes from the minute we scanned our first magic band to the second that we were sitting on the ride. So best $7 times two per person yes. because it was definitely worth it. So now we are headed over to the Riviera to Topolino's Terrace, which I'm excited about. 
up. All the lights are starting to turn on, so I'm so excited to come back after, but let's go to Topolino's Terrace at the Riviera. We are sitting down at the Riviera. Corey and I both just ordered drinks and got our appetizer. I ordered the English Rose, which looks absolutely beautiful. It is soda water, raspberry, lemon liqueur. Basically, it is refreshing and so delicious. And then Corey's drink of choice was a... Reviver number two. And then for our appetizer, we got the ricotta. It is absolutely beautiful looking. And we also have some olive oil and bread as well to start. Oh my God, so amazing. 10 out of 10, recommend. So far, so good at Topolino's. This is like the most beautiful restaurant and we are right next to the window, so our view is just absolutely incredible. Okay, so we got our entrees. I ended up going with the rigatoni, which has chicken, I think broccoli rob, and in this really delicious cream sauce. So let me show you what it looks like. This is the delicious rigatoni. I got the sole. So it is sole with potatoes stuffed on the inside and a garlic, White wine, lemon, butter white sauce. wine, butter sauce. So like I mentioned, I got the rigatoni. This is also phenomenal. I am truly eating off of Corey's plate, and Corey is also eating off of mine. So if you have Topolino's Terrace at the top of the Riviera on your list, I would 100% add it. We just finished up at Topolino's Terrace at the Riviera. It must be one of the best restaurants that we have ever eaten at in Disney. And I know that I've said that about a few restaurants. We've kind of tried to go to the resorts. Because we're on the Skyliner, we just have so many options that we can actually eat at and try. If you want to see a video on Corey and I's favorite to least favorite Disney restaurants, Disney dining, comment down below because that's definitely something that him and I can do. We have very different taste buds, so it would be nice to... <laughs> it's been more of a debate. <laughs> it's been more of a debate, but we do have, you know, different taste buds and like different things, so we can share that with you. But we are leaving the Riviera now and headed back to Hollywood Studios, so we will see you in Batu because we're going to ride Smuggler's Run. But we just made it back into Hollywood Studios and the decoration in this park are so beautiful so I'm gonna insert a few clips here of all the decorations as we walk to Batu where Star Wars Galaxy is so you can see all of the beautiful holiday lights This place is so cool at night. So last year when, well not last year, May. but May. <laughs> My brain's all scattered today, but May, when Corey and I came here, we couldn't see it at night. So look at the Millennium Falcon, because that's what we're about to ride, and it looks so cool at night. Like, look at how incredible this looks at night. Huh. So we are about to go and ride Millennium Falcon because we have our lightning lanes. So let's hit it. The last time that me and Corey did this, we were both the pilots. I'm hoping we get another job today because I need to redeem myself as pilot, so I don't we weren't pilot. the best pilots, but we, you know, we're just happy to ride. So again, what time is it? We're gonna tell you how long it takes us to get through Lightning Lane. It's 7:28. We are walking through the line. I will let you know exactly how long it takes for us to sit down in our seat on the Millennium Falcon. We had the best time. For anyone that is curious about Genie Plus and the Lightning Lane for Smuggler's Run, it was, you can laugh all you want. There's just like a screaming child and I asked if they could be quiet because I'm vlogging for all of you. But either way, so it's 7.53, we returned at 7.30. We went from scanning our magic band to sitting into the Millennium Falcon 
with probably what? Maybe 15 minutes. So I actually really enjoy being in Star Wars at night. So we are headed to Rise of the Resistance because we did not do the like pre-book pay individual lightning lane just because we saw somewhere online and I will keep you also updated that if you just go to Rise at the end of the night when the park is like going to close, not that it's a 100% guarantee of a walk on, but it's not a 160 minute wait like it normally is during the day. It's not half your day wait. It's not half your day. So we will again, we're gonna keep you updated as we go through Rise of the Resistance queue and see exactly how long it is. We have Epcot tomorrow, so quick plug, if you're not yet subscribed, make sure you do so because we're doing a full food tour of the Festival of the Holidays. We are headed over to Rise now. Let's see what the posted wait time is and then we're gonna actually see how long it is. So we'll keep you updated. So stick around to see exactly what happens at night with Rise of the Resistance. As you can see, we are not in Star Wars Galaxy anymore and that is because when we finished up with Rise of the Resistance we ended up having a quick 15 minutes before 9 o'clock so we actually ended up not running but like kind of a fast walk over you to You know that event in the Olympics where they walk but like walk, it's a run. sprint at the same time? Yes. What are those? So we actually just did that so that we could ride Slinky Dog Dash at night. Oh my god. Amazing. If you have the opportunity to ride Slinky Dog Dash at night, I cannot recommend it enough. But with that being said, we are going to report back on Rise of the Resistance. So basically what ended up happening was we got in line at 8 o'clock. The minute we stepped out of our pod, it was 8.45. So 45 minutes from the minute we stepped into the queue to getting into the first part of the ride, the entire ride itself, the queue, was 45 minutes start to finish. I think that is actually a good amount of time considering that the wait times during the day today were up to almost, I think I saw it once at 175. Like that. Look crazy if you're waiting three hours. Yeah, I just like, it is an amazing ride, don't get me wrong. I, I am fully like a stand it's the rise insane, fan. But, you're, you're just but it's just so long to wait for a ride. We're here with the Hollywood Studios train. But we're here to do our three favorites of the day. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? I can start. Okay, three favorites of the day. Three favorites. Dinner at Topolino's. Oh, that was, yep, at the Riviera. A little short shoot action with the wonderful couple that we sat with. Yep. They were fantastic. That was wonderful. And then shout out to this girl for making us get a lot of rides done in the morning. Thank and then you. we can more like chill. So yeah. no one that felt it was more of a lax day, even though we did a lot, was pretty good. Yeah. Okay, I think those are good. Mine would have to well, be. Duh, you're involved. I was I was involved. <laughs> I would say the my first win was just that we rode Slinky Dog Dash at night. My second like favorite of the day was absolutely the charcuterie board at Baseline Tap House. It was just so nice to finally sit and relax during the day at a park and not just be running around rampant. My last favorite of the day is just walking around Hollywood Studios at night with all of the holiday lights. So those are our three favorites. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you in my next one. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure to do so because tomorrow we are doing the Festival of the Holidays at Epcot and we cannot wait to see you there tomorrow. Get Good night. Ready, drink. Bye.